Story Chapter 22 The Separation Between Prince Kamaral Zaman and Princess Bador. The bird, after that act of robbery, landed on a mound not far away, still holding the amulet in its beak. The prince stepped forward hoping it would release the talisman, but as he approached, the bird took off again, flew a short distance and then landed a second time on the ground. He continued to chase. The bird, after swallowing the amulet, flew further. He was very skillful, hoping to kill it with a stone, so he kept chasing. The farther the bird flew, the harder he tried to chase it out of sight. From the valley to the hill, and then from the hill to the valley, Prince Kamaral's man's pheasant walked all day long, farther and farther from the grassy area where the tent was set up and Princess Bador. In the evening, when it should have crawled into a bush, Kamaral's men could have caught it thanks to the darkness, but instead it perched on a high tree branch, where it was very safe. The prince was disappointed because he had spent so much effort in complete vain thinking about whether he should return to camp. But he thought to himself which way to go back. Climbing up and down this valley and then that high hill, in this darkness, will we be able to avoid getting lost and will our health allow it? And if I find a way back, will I dare to show my face to the princess without bringing back that amulet to her? Immersed in those heavy thoughts, and exhausted from fatigue, hunger, thirst, and sleepiness, he lay down and slept overnight under a tree. The next morning, Kamaralzaman woke up before the bird left the tree. As soon as he saw it take off, he observed and chased it all day and had no more results than the previous day. Living on fruits and weeds picked by the roadside and chasing the bird like that from morning till night and sleeping at night next to the tree on which the bird perched, until the tenth day. On the eleventh day the bird was still flying. Kamaralzaman kept observing and following until he reached a big city. When the bird approached a wall, it flew high and flew over the wall to the other side, disappearing. Kamaralzaman lost all hope of finding it again and never expected to get the agate amulet back for Princess Bador. Depressed by so many unspeakable things, going into the city. This city is built on the coast and has a very beautiful harbor. He wandered the streets, not knowing where to go or where to stay, when suddenly he arrived at the port. Still not knowing what to do, he walked along the beach to an open garden gate. He walked in and greeted an old man who was busy hoeing. He raised his head. At first glance, he saw that it was a stranger, a Muslim, so he quickly invited him inside and closed the garden door. Kamaralzaman asked him why he had to be so careful. The old man replied, Because I see that you are a stranger who has just come here and is a Muslim and in this city the majority of the population worships false gods. They hate Muslims with a passion and treat the few of us who follow the religion of our prophet very poorly. You probably didn't know that, so it was extremely lucky that you made it this far without any bad encounters. Indeed, they closely monitor Muslims from far away, unable to fully understand their cruel deeds, to lead them into some trap. Praise God for bringing Arth to a secure place. Kamaralzaman thanked many kind old men who generously gave him a place to hide from all humiliation. He wanted to say more, but the old gardener quickly said, Let's leave those compliments alone. He was still hungry and tired, he needed to eat and rest first. He took him into his small house and after eating all the food that the old man gave him in a friendly way that touched him, the old man asked him to tell him the reason for his coming here. 
Kamralzaman satisfied his wishes and when he had told all his story without hiding anything, he asked him the way back to his father's kingdom. Because, he added, if we consider meeting the princess again, where do we know where she is after eleven days of separation due to a strange incident? I don't know if she's alive or not. Speaking of this, he could not hold back his tears. To answer Cameron's a man's question, the old gardener told him that it would take him a full year to leave this city to reach countries where there were only Muslims led by Muslims. Fellow monarchs. But if you follow the waterway to Ebony Island, it takes much less time and from there going to Kaledin's Children Island is extremely easy. Every year, a merchant ship anchored to Ebony Island and he could board this ship to go from there to the island of Kaledin's children. He added, if you had come here a few days earlier, you would have been able to get on the annual boat to go Ebony Island. While waiting for the next train, if you agree to stay, I will be happy to give you this small house to stay temporarily. Prince Kamralzaman felt very pleased to have found shelter in a place where no one knew him, with nothing in his hands. He agreed to stay with the old gardener. While waiting for the next merchant ship to go to Ebony Island, during the day he worked in the garden, and at night, nothing stopped him from thinking about his beloved princess Baduor. He spent the night with sighs, regrets and tears. But let us leave Prince Kamralzaman here to return to Princess Bador whom we have left to sleep in the tent. Thank you for joining us for today's fairy tale. We hope these stories bring joy and meaning to your day. If you love our channel, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any exciting tales. Wishing you a good night and sweet dreams. See you in the next story.